Good evening. <laughs> yeah, it is a, it was a tough act to follow. He's, I was thinking um, uh, about, you know, some of the things that he said that, I, of course, I've heard m most of them many times, but I was thinking uh, about things, uh, you know, oh, gee, you know, I, I, I should uh, say something more about that. I should say, yeah, but normally when I teach a class, I have, um, which I, you know, teach a, a, a lot of classes, uh, both when I was at the Hawaii Betsu Inn and then now in Maui. And, um, you know, I, I find it easy to talk for a long time because, um, you know, I just go digress in all different directions. Yeah. And, and I don't need any notes for that, just a basic curriculum, just basic idea. We're going to talk about, you know, you know, Shinran's life today or something like that. But a short talk is terrible. You know, somebody said, I was told, you know, 20 minutes now, just 20 minutes. So, so um, I thought, well, that, then, um, and I thought, and then, Alan uh, Goto told me, said to me right before, oh, it could be like a TED talk, you know. You know those, those TED talks? Uh, you know, but those guys are always so smart, so that doesn't work for me. <laughs> My TED talk, that would be more like a Fred talk or something. <laughs> like, you know, I don't know. So it would be like, it doesn't sound, yeah. I wouldn't be too slick. And then also, but then I also thought, how about those... Um, you know, a lot of times when I, I'm looking for, I want I need to buy something, you know, they have, the, you look on YouTube, you know, product review, right? Have you ever done that? Or, or even like how to use the thing that you just bought. So, but, you know, I, 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 so I thought, oh, well, what about like a product review? Uh, you know, that, that's a kind of, um, what is Shin Buddhism to me? But of course, obviously we can't do, we, I wouldn't want to do that either because um, Buddhism and Jodo Shinchu, Shin Buddhism are not, products, like Dr. Bloom was saying, it makes it easier. I can just say, like Dr. Bloom was saying, <laughs> it is, <clears throat> it is, um, it's not a, an object. It's not out there. You know, Shin Buddhism um, or the path of Buddhism, you know, all of that is something not outside ourselves. It is our life. It is itself our life. So that's very important. Um, see, I'm really trying to go f to keep this uh, timing, keep the pace. So, Watch the, Jane. the question <laughs> she's holding up sign. Yeah. Fifteen minutes, <laughs> no, but eighteen minutes. The, this is um, so you know. And then, uh, what is Shin Buddhism to me? Again, not a not my opinion, right? It's it's what it what it really. Uh, I can't answer that by giving an opinion of it, or even like like. Like Dr. Bloom said, you know, you can, it is what it is to me, my life, my living. Uh, I can have opinions about it. And of course, I can know, I can study Buddhism and study uh, Shin, uh, Shinran's teachings and doctrine and stuff. And I should, we all should, uh, to, the more to understand, but to deepen our understanding, to grow. Um, but at, any, at every given point, Shin Buddhism is already, that's my, that is the life I'm living. That is, that is rea the reality. I mean, I think it, it's, it's a shame that we have to talk in terms of, of uh, you know, uh, denominations or sects or things like that because we are, because in a sense, the truth is something that we are all part of. We can't separate ourselves from. We can just sort of ignore it in our living. And, but then there are consequences to that in terms of, which I'll, I'll just, hopefully say later in terms of the fact that we are wasting the precious moments of our life. That's the most important thing. We're not, appreci we're not appreciating the life that we're living. So I want to talk about real quickly, you know Tani Sho, um, which uh, uh, Dr. Bloom mentioned, uh, talked about so much, and he, that he's been, always been, and I got very enthusiastic about Tani Sho from uh, reading Dr. Bloom when I first got interested in Jodo Shinshu, first encountered, I should say, met the teaching of Shinran. Interestingly, I, I personally did not meet Jodo Shinshu in the form of an institution or even in the form of a, of a, a, you know, a historical entity knowing about the, the institution or the religion. I first thing I discovered was a little book by D.T. Suzuki with that was, a, that was basically about Shinran. So that, I met Shinran that way, and that's what made me, even when I, so I say even when, <laughs> even when I met 
when I encountered the institution of Jodo Shinshu, when we moved, my wife and I moved to uh, um, Hawaii and started getting involved, I think if I had just met the institution at first, I would, it would have been harder because I wouldn't have understood, um, you know, what it was exactly, and it had its own, has its own, as we all know, it has its own, you know, quirkiness and everything, um, and it seemed like sort of Protestantism and like a mixture of this and that, and then, but when I got to, but since I already knew, I, no, I didn't know, I didn't know, but since I had already encountered Shinran and had some idea of what he was teaching, that I was so moved inside by Shinran's teaching that, you know, that, that was okay then. I understood that whatever happens in, a, his, you know, in the way we have to work things out in this world, you know, in the, in, living is always more complicated. It's never ideal, you know. So, so I was hoping that it would be a place where everybody was talking about Shinran's teaching all the time, you know, they didn't turn out to be that way, but, you know, so, but, you know, that was okay, too. So I've had to learn myself, you know, not to be, not to be the sort of ego, egotistic idealist about those kinds of things, you know. So, but I just want to talk about one, one uh, statement of Shinran's. Can you hear me okay? From Tanisho, which you all know. I just want to say just something, a few brief things about it. Even a good person attains birth in the pure land, so it goes without saying that an evil person will. So you know that one, and then Shinran goes on to say, common sense way of thinking is that, you know, even an evil person goes to the pure. Amida loves everyone and saves even the, even the evil person, goes without saying the, the good person will go there, but he turns it around, and he says, even the good person will go there. It goes without saying that, that the evil person Goes, is, will attain birth in the Pure Land. And um, <clears throat> I think that this is something that appeal would really have, is something that, that grabs you. Um, if you are the type of person, like, like I think, like myself, who's always been drawn to, to religious thinking, religious ideas, always kind of looking for spiritual understanding, spiritual teachings, um, uh, it's, and usually, if you are that kind of person, it's probably because, like me, you have a deep sense of not being good, right? You have a deep sense that you're, you know, you're not, you're not a, there's something unworthy about you. You're, you're, you're trying to, com to, to find fulfillment, trying to find completion in your life. And, uh, I, or to even go farther, I think, like, in my, own, in my own case, you know, I think I've always had a very deep sense of being very you know, not value, you know, not have a sense of worth, a very bad sense of self, a poor sense of self-worth. And uh, so you're trying to find worth. You're trying to find v value for yourself. And uh, one of the ways you can do that is to find a religion that tells you, if you do this, if you believe, then you will, you know, either you can work your way up the ladder or God or Buddha or whatever will transform you and you will be good. And then you'll be a good person. And, uh, but it's a kind of a vicious circle because you, if you want to find your fulfillment through being good, you have to affirm your goodness at the expense of others because you can't be good if, every, if other people aren't bad. There has to be, you have to be better than someone else to be good, you know. So that, that's a kind of ego problem of goodness, the whole idea of trying to be good. And so... Um, that only deepens our suffering. Remember the original point of Buddhism. We should never forget this. The original point of Buddhism is not to go to heaven, you know, or something. The original point, the original purpose, the Buddha said, is to, to, to uh, get out of the uh, endless cycle of dissatisfaction, suffering, dukkha, you know. So if you are trying to be good, you know what's going to happen? You're just going to deepen the cycle of suffer suffering. You won't get out of it. You won't arise above it and be, I'm a good person, everything is fine. You will continue to suffer because you know what suffering is, it's, it's caused by, it's caused by our judgmental mind. That's attachments, clinging, judgments. So as long as you have, you have to have a judgmental mind to be good. <laughs> you have to say, I'm good, I'm doing the right thing. You have to make that judgment about yourself. So it's a hollow sense of good goodness. You know what it is? It's, self-justification, that seems to me. 
you know, my own, I think when you are trying to, when you think, are trying to attain virtue for yourself, it's a way of justifying yourself. So the words of Shinran are like a, a, a bolt of lightning in your life, that these words, you know. I Means most people, I think, a lot of people would read this and not think much of it, but if you, st if you, if you're, if you stop and think about it, it's like a bolt of lightning, you know. It just, it just shakes you out of the whole business of trying to prove yourself, to try to be a, to try to be a person to justify your existence, um, and it, and you, in fact, well, you know, that's really destructive and behavior anyway, to trying to, to, to justify yourself at the, ex because you have to. You're going to harm your. You're going to harm yourself and others. You're not going to be able to be present for life because you're always judging, comparing yourself. You're always, you know, gauging your value in in, in relation to others. So um, uh, let's see. So I think what the words Shinran said: even a good person, even the good person, attains birth goes without saying the evil person will is in some in a one way that it's telling us to realize that you're not a good person but you're just a person you know that, that that's the important thing no judgment the same with everyone else all the bad people that i like to judge you know or monku monk monku and talk about there it goes without saying that the evil bad person will be born in the pure land, will reach ultimate happiness. You know, if you happen to um, be truly good, you'll, you'll get there too. You know, that's okay. And, and that idea of, this idea of this great compassion, this on a deeper level, I think, but the idea of the great compassion that is at the root of all existence, uh, Essence of reality, you know, Amida's great compassion. Um, Dr. Bloom was trying to talk, was talking about what Amida is, and we can't define Amida, that's the whole point. Now, from a logical point of view, this tradition of Western science and so on, Western philosophy, if you can't define something, it doesn't exist. So all of the, all of the, the ultimate reality of in, it's in Buddhism, Dharmakaya, the, the ultimate, the, the true Buddha body, all those things don't, simply don't exist, <laughs> you know, according to traditional logical uh, uh, system. Um, so that, but that means there's something wrong with traditional logical system because it doesn't, if those, it doesn't take in, it, you know, if something is not measurable, it doesn't exist, but all the really important things in life are, are not measurable, you know? How do you measure love? How do you measure uh, good... Uh, um, what was I going to say? <laughs> how, how, how do you measure um, the uh, 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 whether something is uh, uh, you like something or not? Why is some why is one work of art better than another? So some people say no, that's not true. Everything no, nothing can be better. But actually, you know that the, some things are better than others. Well, how do you measure that? There, there's no you can't use scientific in instruments to measure it. And, you know. Amida. You know what it you know the meaning, right? Amida. Okay. That that's just our word for that's just the same word in English uh, come down from all these thousands of years. Meter, measure. It's a co cognate in from the Indo-European language. We still use this as a negation in English too, uh, a few words, asymmetrical, non-symmetrical. So that's a negation. So without measure, without measure, that's what Amida means. That Amida is actually a concept in, in uh, Buddhist philosophy. It starts out that way, that Amitabha, measure, life, excuse me, uh, light without measure, and Amitayus, life without measure, light and life. You can't measure. So by... But by our rational means, Amida doesn't exist. That's absolutely right. You know? But Amida is actually what life really is. Oh, you could say Amida, I think another way to say is Amida is the oneness of life, interdependence. So we can't be separate from Amida. We are part of Amida is the ocean of life, and we're the 
you know, drops of water or the waves on the ocean of life, whatever image you want to use. But um, now here's the point, the most important thing, I think, to me. Um, you know, this is the great compassion that is striving at all times to bring true peace and happiness to me, okay? Um, not because I'm a good person. That would mean that I had earned it, right? But because um, I could never earn it. So that's the compassion. It's directed toward someone who could never earn it. But that's not a moral thing. It's just a fact. I mean, have you ever... Can you imagine just... So this is the picture we have to paint for ourselves. You know this, you know this is true. You just don't, we just don't think about it. But um, how can you earn your life? Right? I mean, go, think of it. You have two parents. You have four grandparents. Eight great-grandparents and so on. That's just, a, that's just a couple of years back, a few years back. But it goes back and back and back. Right? You have you know, hundreds... Thousands of ancestors. And then if enough generations back, it isn't very much, you have more ancestors than there were people on the planet. So that tells you something else. It's all connected together. And then um, you go back to the beginning of all life in this world and then to the formation of, of, of the earth itself and in the, in the solar system and the galaxy and the whole universe, the Big Bang and whatever came before that. And that just might be one atom in a much bigger universe, right? Our whole universe. All of that had to happen just so I could be sitting here giving my opinion right now, you know, <laughs> taking up space. Isn't that right? Just right now. So what is, how can I possibly earn that? You know, how can I possibly say I'm good? I'm, I'm, I'm a person who has deserve, no matter how much karma, good karma you have or, you know, that you've done good deeds, even if you could say, and we don't even know if we say karmic condition from past lives, but what are the, is that, my, is, that your, oh, is that your ego going from life to life? I mean, that was a debate in the history of Buddhism. You know, what is, what is reborn, you know? And, and of course, it, it was never really a comfortable idea. Actually, karma is, probably, is just the ripples of our actions throughout time. It doesn't necessarily mean you. And the trouble with karma also is that when we, the thing is that when we do our mischievous, our negative behavior, we're, actually, we're causing harm. Not this. We think, oh yeah, I'll reap the, the punishment in future life. No, probably someone else will reap the punishment. <laughs> you know, like all the global warming, we're, we're condemning other people to suffer, you know, more than us, right? Because of our using all the fossil fuels and everything. So that's bad. So, you know, but that, we can't help that either in a sense, you know. We, I mean, we can help a lot of what we do, but we are... Uh, uh, but it's so difficult to, to, to uh, become good, even, even things like that that we know will be beneficial to us and to the next generation. We can't even change that. Um, but that's a digression. So let me go back. So, so but the point is, how can we pre even pretend to be the system? You know, most religions have that system of virtue. You earn reward or punishment in the next life or in this life too. But how can you pre even pretend to be good in, in, in the face of the infinite working of, of reality that you know, has brought us to this moment? And it's kind of arrogant too, it seems to me, because you know, I think of myself here. Um, how can I even pretend to have this, any kind of virtue as if I'm above the working of life? You know, here I'm able to live. All of us, we're sitting here. We're able to live because... Uh, thousands of beings throughout the course of your life have donated their life to you, right? Right? All those plants and animals. They're, they're all bodhisattvas, you know. They've given their life for you. And uh, uh, we've, so, you know, how, how can we pretend? And they have parents and grandparents and great grandparents all the way back to the beginning of time, too, right? Right? They're not just nothing. They're also life, you know, life form plants and animals. <laughs> so, you know, so here I am. I've taken all these lives, and here I want to pretend I'm a virtuous person, right? I'm a good person. That's, that's impossible. I mean, I'm always causing harm. I'm killing living beings, even if I want to be a vegetarian, whatever. Buddha tried to overcome that by, you know, starving to death almost. You know, that was the way. Well, how do you overcome 
suffering. Well, you, you completely remove yourself from the cycle of birth and death. But he realized, you know, he couldn't do it. Even though you can die, that's all you can do. But what good does it do? So then he took the, 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 the milk or whatever from the maiden, and he drank it, and he sat down, and he, and he, just, and he meditated, and he woke to what? Did he awake to? To the oneness of life. Pratitya Samutpada. That's what the Buddha really taught, the oneness of life. You know, um, everything else is just a way of explaining it. Um, so, um, we all do that. Um, what else? But when you realize that, I've lived, I'm, I live totally by receiving life from others all the way back from the beginning of time. That's a really, you know, important thing too for, and helpful thing too to realize even everyone who's lived before me is still supporting me right now in this moment of life. And, um, but you know, what else can we do but respond in, in deep gratitude for this um, get boundless life, Amida, boundless life, measureless life that embraces me just as I am, gives me this, the infinite gift of this moment of life. That's the only life we have, you know, this moment. So we're part of this infinite life, and yet this moment is the only time we can ever experience it. Right now, unre unreplaceable, you know, irreplaceable. It goes, so that's why it goes without saying that even an evil person attains birth. Even, uh, uh, that, excuse me, not even. It goes without saying that an evil person attains birth. An evil person awakens to the infinite treasure of life every moment. That's what really matters. That's, that's, that's really birth. And, um, you know, in every other religion in the world, there's, uh, there's always the idea that, you know, punishment, if you don't do shape up. And uh, um, so what about us? Do you get punished if you don't do this, if you don't wake up to that? <laughs> if you don't attain Shinjin or whatever? You know, some people tell me, uh, you know, Jodo Shinjin people, if you don't attain Shinjin, you know, you're going to hell, right? And... Um, I don't know, that's a deep point. Um, even not waking up, um, being a person who can't, I think Shinran hinted it, talked about this too. You know, for just like in that one passage that Dr. Bloom mentioned, you know, about I'm not excited about dying and going to the Pure Land. Well, we should be, right? But we're not. We don't want to die. Um, and, uh, uh, but even that, especially that, if I did want to go to the Pure Land, oh, I can't wait to get to the Pure Land, that would that would raise serious question about whether I really, really um, understand Amida's working, you know, because I'm not appreciating this moment. That's dualistic, too. Just like thinking Amida's out there, thinking I want to go to the Pure Land. No, I want to awaken to the Pure Land. You know, whatever happens afterwards, that's Amida's business when I die. That's Amida's business. But I want to awaken to the Pure Land. And um, uh, so, but more practically speaking, I just want to try to squeeze all these things in. The only, if we, don't, if we don't meet this truth in our life, then we, we may waste most of our life. The moments of this life are wasted. They're gone forever. Because, um, and, and that's our modern world. We're getting worse and worse in our modern world, I think, unfortunately. Uh, all the technology and everything is driving us people insane. And I would, you know, have you seen those, um, have you seen people, a family or a group of friends in a restaurant and they're all texting? <laughs> Or I saw one time at the school, <laughs> at the, at the uh, Pacific Buddhist Academy, you know, on, between the annex and the, and the Vetsuin, uh, and the hondo, the annex hondo and the, and the main hondo, uh, there's that kind of that lanai thing. And all the students, you know, Piper knows, remembers this, all the students line, uh, you know, line up, boys on one side, girls on the other. The boys are all texting. I don't know if they're texting the girls, but these young girls walking by, you know, High school girls and the boys are like this. And I'm saying, there's something wrong with this picture. You know? <laughs> they're, not, they're not even looking at the girls, you know. So, but you, but more, more sinister than that is if you have you know, family, a group of friends at a table in a restaurant, all texting, all paying attention to, they're miss, totally missing maybe the last unrepeatable moment they'll ever have together. It's all gone because they wasted it doing something else, but the, the real people, that's why we say in Buddhism, face to face, right? The Dharma has to be shared face to face. Technology is helpful, but we have to meet the person. Maybe we might meet them through, through technology, yes, 
but we have to meet the living person, the spirit, spiritual meeting of a person. So, I mean, you can meet, like we can, we meet Shinran by hearing about him, learning the, reading books and so on. But um, we have to be awake to that. And I think if we are in the habit of always being distracted, we may not be, miss it, we may miss it. So, uh, and Shinran also said, um, and anyway, aside from that, being going uh, the worry about w being punished and so on. Well, Shinran him said also in Tanisho, you know, um, well, uh, I, so people would say that it, those these Nembutsu people are going to hell for reciting the Nembutsu because they're not practicing Buddhism properly. You're supposed to do this and this and this. And uh, Shinran said that, well, this is what I learned from my teacher, and if I'm wrong. Um, and I fall in hell saying the Nembutsu, that's okay, because that's where I was going anyway. There's no, <laughs> right? No, no harm, no problem. And um, one last thing. Um, there is a poem, and this also, interestingly, t I touches, it's what Dr. Bloom was talking about. Um, uh, Shinran took this, teach this very seriously, but he, he got it from a poem, a gatha, written by Tom Luan, he, he, and he elaborated on it in his own wasan, his own poems. But this is a, just one verse of a long poem written by the uh, Pure Land or Buddhist master, uh, Tan Luan, uh, which uh, was probably the most important of all the, the seven masters that Shinran, um, uh, Vasubandhu and Tan Luan, uh, are probably the most central to, cre to what Shinran, to Shinran's understanding of the Pure Land. Buddhism. Anyway, Tan Luan said in this poem, and you'll, you'll hear the familiarity with the Wasan if you, if, you, if you know them. Since attainment of Buddhahood, ten kalpas have passed, ten infinite ages have passed. The Buddha's life indeed has no measure. Dharma body's wheel of light pervades the Dharma realm, shining on the blind and ignorant of the world. Hence, I bow in homage. Now, so, Dr. Bloom is just saying, you know, Shinran understood. No, Amida is not, the story of Amida is good, helps us to understand. The statue of Amida helps us. A scroll with a painting of Amida can help us, but it's a skillful means, upaya. But actually, Amida, Amida's life has, the Buddha's life, Amida, Amitayus, boundless life. The Buddha's life has no measure. And, um, so that's important. Amida is beyond the mythical character that we're told, you know, who lives in the Pure Land and who comes to get us when we die and things like that. The name, measureless. And uh, the, the, so that's the true reality of all existence. If Amida is infinite, it, it, boundless and infinite, Amida includes all of us, embraces all of us. And um, um, Amida has no measure Amida is beyond all of our judgment and opinions, all of our calculations. And then the second thing that he mentions about the Dharma body, the formless body of the Buddha, infinite body of the Buddha, which is also Amida, a little distinction in philosophically, but it's, it's, it's the Buddha, it's, it's Amida, boundless. Uh, and uh, the wheel of light, Shinran uses this image in, the, in his first wasan that we chant, the first section of, I think the first or the second section of wasan we chant. Um, the wheel of light, I always imagine this wheel of light just spinning throughout the universe, you know, uh, pervading everywhere. And it shines on the blind and ignorance of this world. So in Shoshinge, which we, you know, we traditionally chant every day, um, uh, it, Shinran says that even though the sky is filled with the dark clouds, uh, that's our selfish ego, our selfish, self-centered uh, mind, blocking out the light of truth in this world, it doesn't block it out. In reality, the light is always there. So hence, Tom Luan says, I bow in homage. All we can do is bow, namo. You know, namo is bowing, surrendering, bow in homage. So it, that's kind of how I wanted to conclude, just to say with those words, you know, that the light, the light of Amida Buddha, the light, this infinite light of of this infinite, boundless uh, life shines on all of us, just as we are, equally, on the blind and ignorant of the world, which we're all, <laughs> well, probably all would agree that we are. And all our, own, our response can only be that 
uh, vowing, vowing in, in homage and appreciation. So thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>